All right, guys, so in this chapter, we're going to go over the library module in detail, kind of talk about each component. In the next chapter, we're going to show specifically how you use those components in your workflow. So let's get right to it. We're going to start with this left panel here and just go in order through all the different panels, starting with the navigator panel. I'm going to expand this, and now the navigator panel is basically, it kind of has a few different functions. It gives you a quick preview of whatever image you are mousing over in your film strip. And if you guys remember, back in when we, when we set our preferences, we actually have the option to turn this feature on or off. You can actually make it so it only shows the image that's selected or you can make it show show whatever you have mouse over. Um, now if you have like I, I usually like to work with this film strip kind of fully expanded so I usually drag this film strip up a little bit. Let me it's hard to grab that there we go. So I usually drag it up so it's it's pretty much about the same size as the navigator but what the navigator window does is allows me to zoom in wherever I want. So I can kind of control the zoom just by clicking on it there. And we can control the level of zoom by clicking these different options. Now fit is going to fit the image to the window so you see all edges. Fill is going to fill the entire image to w the closest edge. So basically all edges are filling the window. One to one is going to give you a one to one pixel preview and then three to one is going to give you a three to one pixel preview. Now with the one to one and the three to one, if you haven't already rendered the preview, when you click on those, it's actually going to take a few seconds to render the full resolution preview of that image. So that might take a few seconds. So we can use the navigator window to kind of click back and forth, zoom in really close. We can also do the same thing by just clicking on the image as well um, and zooming around this way as well. But it's a it's a quick and easy way to get around uh, the image. All right, so let's shrink that. Actually, we'll just leave that open. We'll go to the next panel, which is the catalog panel. And this is going to give me kind of a quick, uh, just a few different sorting options on our catalog currently. We're going to see all photographs. We're going to see quick collections. And we're going to go over quick collections in detail. But quick collection are actually, um, it's exactly that. It's a quick collection that you put together to use for some sort of purpose. These are temporary collections, meaning that if you create a quick collection and you don't categorize it somehow, uh, into some place, whether it's in a real actual collection or whether it's by keyword, when you close out Lightroom and reopen, your quick collection is gone. Hence, they are quick collections. They're just meant for temporary kind of storing a few files to to do whatever you need to with. Storing files in a in a kind of organizational sense, not in actually putting files in a certain place. You're just storing them organizationally in that like for example if I want to select 10 photos to take to a 4x6 I can select them and add them to the quick collection and then after I add them to the quick collection I can say I'm going to I'm going to add these to the 4x6 collection and then they stay in that 4x6 collection permanently okay the previous import is basically just going to show us whatever images we previously imported now uh, for the purpose of this tutorial video in this catalog we previously imported all 22 photographs so it's just going to show all 22 but if you had say if we import two or five or ten more photographs it's going to show whatever you last imported so it's a nice way to see like just what's new in the catalog and then previously in the last tutorial video we actually exported as a catalog and so it shows those previous export as catalog which again is the same 22 images because we selected all the images and we exported as a catalog as well if I want to remove any of these I can just right click on them and I can say remove this temporary collection and it's gone um, so that's how you can kind of control the catalog, this little preview window. But again, it's just a quick way of kind of sorting and giving you access to uh, the files that are in your catalog. Now, in this next window in the folders, we're going to see the actual file structure for whatever we've imported into Lightroom. So right now we've only imported one folder, but say if we imported multiple folders, it's going to show each one of those folders there. We can remove a folder by right-clicking, and we can say remove. We can also rename. I don't want to remove this because it's my only folder in here, but we can rename it to whatever we want. And we showed you that in the last, uh, in a few videos ago when we kind of did some uh, file system management type stuff. You can also add the parent folder, which means it's going to add the folder right above it. So if I click add parent folder, it's going to add the Lightroom tutorial folder itself. Now I don't necessarily want it to do that because what happens is if I if I change the name of this parent folder then again it's going to break these links. So if I want to remove this now all I do is I right click and I say promote subfolders and now the subfolders it'll give you a little uh, warning they'll say this will remove the top level folder and promote a subfolder you hit promote and now the subfolders are going to become the primary folder again. So now I don't have to worry about if I want to change that parent folder's name, say at some point, um, just based on whatever my workflow is, like say I archive it and I want to change the, the end of it to dash archived, then it's not going to you know, break all the, I don't have to basically relocate the files in Lightroom. 
All right, so if there, let me check if there's any other feature we should go over here. Oh, you can also create a folder inside originals. So if I say create a folder and I say um, 00, 00 subfolder, it's going to create another folder here. And if I go show in Explorer so we can actually see these folders, you'll see inside of originals that we have 00, 00 subfolder. Okay, so I'm going to close that out and then we're going to remove this. So I'm just going to hit remove and it's gone. Again, if we remove this from the Lightroom catalog, it's just going to remove the folder. It's not going to actually delete the images unless I specify to actually delete images. So it's, it's a little bit different. You're not actually deleting files unless you right click on a file and you hit delete. All right, let's check out the rest. Okay, so this uh, next we have the save metadata, which basically if you update the metadata, you can actually save it out. Um, the next few options are really cool. Synchronize the folder. Basically what this does is if I were to add photos, this is that studio session that we did when we did that little tethered capture. So let's say I add one of these into, I'm going to shrink this, shrink all this stuff. So let's say I add one of these images back into this folder. Okay, and I'm going to delete this little other, we don't need this folder anymore inside our originals file. So now we have 23, you can see 23 items inside of our originals folder, but if I go back to Lightroom, we only have 22 in the catalog. Well, I can right click here and hit synchronize folder and say import new, and it's automatically going to basically bring in whatever new, new image that I had. So I say synchronize, and there we go. I have a sweet image of the soda pop cans on my desk. That's awesome. I shouldn't drink so much soda. Okay, so we also see now, now that we did a, uh, another import, we see that we have a new kind of collection here in this catalog view, which is the previous import. And so we can kind of look at whatever we previously imported. And I want to delete that now. So I'm going to just delete that photo right out of the catalog. And it's gone. I actually deleted it from the disk as well. All right. So if I want to update the folder location, I can. I don't need to in this situation because it's not broken. Um, but if, if you did that, then you'd update it and, and you can actually point it to a new location. We don't need to do that though right now. Let's check out if there's any other options to go into. Um, we can also specify right here to import into this folder, which will automatically bring up our import window to import right there. Um, and we can also say we want to export this folder as a catalog. And we showed you guys at the end of the last chapter how to export as a catalog. The Show Explorer we've gone over a few times. This is just going to bring up that exact folder inside of the Windows Explorer or Mac. Uh, your Mac Explorer, whatever that's called. Um, and so you can see the files that are, are there. You can kind of see the file structure and everything. All right. And then the last thing is our properties. This is just going to bring up the Windows properties for that folder as well. So you can see just general information on that folder. All right. So let's move on to the collections. We have this is another way of sorting. You're going to find that in Lightroom, there's 10 different ways of doing the same thing. For organizational purposes, it's really what you guys prefer in your workflow because there's so many different ways. You can use collections, quick collections, you can use permanent collections, you can use uh, ratings, uh, flags, filters, keywords. All of it's going to be just for organizational stuff, so really you guys are going to decide what works best for you. But these collections, it gives you kind of a, a listing of smart collections that are already uh, basically set up for you. And what they are is there's some that are based on the colors, based on stars, based on what you did last month, based on recently modified video files, and without keywords. So let's say if I rate this a five-star image. Well, it automatically goes in the five-star quick collection. So if I select that, it's it'll show me the five-star files. Now let's say I, uh, I color this image red. Well, now it automatically goes into my red collection right there. And you can add as many collections as you want as well by just clicking the plus item. But we're going to go over that when we actually get to the collection section. So that's just an idea of what you can do with collections, another way of organizing. Now we've already covered publish services as well as import and the export features. So let's move on to the right side panel.